Hello, everyone, and welcome to Edge Talk Radio. My name is Angela Zabel. That's me. And today we are here. We are going to be talking with International Jungle Retreat host Connie Delegato and Teresa Rosa. And we are going to have so much fun. We're going to be talking about manifesting big dreams. And as we get continue on, this is going to be a lot of fun. So listen in. <laughs> So Angela Zabel, who is that? Who am I? My name is Angela Zabel. I have connected with spirit my entire life, working with a team in the non-physical and sharing messages from a multitude of realms with people. I am also a teacher, coach, retreat host, medium, radio show host, writer, gallery speaker. I also offer online and private group sessions with guidance, mediumship, intuition, and I also have the Amplified Universe membership. And this is a group that we are going, growing our connection to us, our world, all that is around us, and our role in it. Sharing knowledge with others, working with people around the world. You can find me on all the social media aspects. The biggest thing, go to my website, AngelaZabel.com. And today we're here with Edge Magazine. Edge Magazine is the leading events and re media resource dedicated to all aspects of holistic living, health, wellness, and the mysteries beyond. They're sharing information, wisdom, and resources committed to promoting businesses, organizations, and individuals who support our collective journey to wholeness and balance. You can subscribe to their magazine, sign up to their newsletter, look at all their online content, and you can even become a drop spot. So go ahead and check out their website at edgemagazine.net. And today we are here with Connie Delgado and Teresa Rose. They are in Quintana Roo, Mexico, and Connie's lifelong dream has been to live in Mexico, and Teresa's dream has been to build an international community. They met Inten 20 years ago. What's that? Go intentional. Intentional. In intention oh, an intentional community. That's also international. <laughs> I yeah. love that. I love that. They met 20 years ago at a hermitage retreat in northern Minnesota. And Connie was a private chef and caterer for 50 years, and Teresa was a general contractor. And Connie also led self-care retreats for women in Mexico for 15 years. They reconnected in 2019. Connie had asked Teresa to do some remodeling work on her condo. And then they started sharing their dreams and decided to look at opportunities in Mexico. They bought four lots in the jungle outside of Puerto Malaros. Hopefully I said that right. If not, I apologize. Puerto <laughs> Malaros. There it is. Puerto Morales. <laughs> You're much better at it. <laughs> in Mexico in 2020, a week before COVID shut down the world. They returned in 2021 and started to build their house with a local builder, and they now have a beautiful house and a casita ready to rent, plus many beautiful gardens on two of their, of their lots. In the midst of this amazing manifestation journey, they discovered they had fallen in love and got married in 2022. Congratulations to you both. <laughs> And they have created an amazing intentional retreat, and they're ready to share their love, joy, and energy they have created in the jungle, off-grid. But off-grid doesn't mean that it doesn't have amenities, so keep that in mind as we continue to go forward. So make sure to check out their website, DelaRosaTravels.com. You can also find out more and on their Facebook, Casa De La Rosa and the Four Elements. And they also have an Ancestral Day of the Dead retreat coming up in November. And make sure to check them out. Go on their website. Again, Della Rosa Travels. You're going to find out all the information and you're going to see the beautiful place they have created. So, Connie and Teresa, this has been a different sort of journey for you, coming from the, the chef and caterer and a general contractor coming together to build an intentional retreat in Mexico. At what point, when you got together and started working on the condo, did you decide, hey, let's actually do this dream big manifestation? Well, 
we've, we've talked about it for on and off for 20 years, uh, you know, where, where we wanted to go with our lives and what was important to us. Um, but then just reconnecting just brought the conversation back up again. And, but, but the one thing that, that happened for me in January of 2019 uh, when I, the first week in January and I was talking to the universe and I said to her, what's next? I'm ready for the next adventure. We had um, closed our traveling goddesses retreat business that I had with another childhood friend of mine. And so I was ready for the next thing. So um, when I was finished with my conversation, I picked up my phone. And I had an email from um, Runaway Realty in Puerto Morelos, Mexico, which is a place that I had visited and loved many times. And there were two ads, two, uh, two places that were highlighted, and they both said, perfect for a retreat or Airbnb. And I was like, Wow, that was a that was a quick answer. <laughs> um, I guess I'm supposed to look at property in Mexico. You know, no having this dream for many many years to live here, and so um, this coincided with Teresa coming to start work on my uh, on my condo. <laughs> I had also. Uh, rented a place in Puerto Morales for the month of March. And so I thought, well, gee, who better to come and look at property with me than, you know, my contractor friend? Because <laughs> I'm more the dreamer and she, she's more the practical person, right? Um, mm. And so I said, um, I really want you to come down. I have this place for a month and I've asked, you know, different friends if they want to join me. Um, I want you to come and look at this property with me. So the last week of March, she came down to stay with me. And uh, we went and looked at these two pieces of property. And one of them we fell in love with and thought, oh, this would be perfect, mm -hmm. right? And it was really way out of our price range, but it was like, well, we'll just manifest it. Let's, <laughs> let's get to work. So, so that summer we spent um, talking to real estate agents in the States, trying to uh, learn about international um, real estate, uh, putting together a business plan, um, registering our business with the state of Minnesota. And, and we started um, telling our friends and, and put together a little program to have people invest uh, to try to raise the money. So, um, so we went back in November. You wanna continue? Um, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll back up a little. Okay. Just a little bit. Um, sure. Uh, well, it had, I, I was at a crossroads in life as well when Connie called me to do her, uh, the remodel. And I was in a town that I didn't, I no longer wanted to live in. I didn't like how, um, how my life was going. I just came out of a, a difficult relationship that drained me. Uh, so uh, I spent about a year just really focusing on myself. What do I want in life? Uh, what do what's the picture I want to see moving forward? I've I've had this dream that just keeps getting put on hold, put on the back shelf because life happens. You have to do this. You have to do that. And I finally decided after leaving that relationship that. I really wanted to focus on myself. I, I liked myself and I just spent a year focusing on that. And the more I focused on it, the higher my vibration felt. 
and the happier I got. And I found myself living in an absolute place of joy uh, after practicing this for about a year, meditation, uh, self-care, et cetera. Um, so when Connie called me, I, you know, like I said, I was at a crossroads. I, I knew I wanted to leave uh, the town I lived in. So I sold my house and I, I didn't know what was next. <laughs> like, um, you know, like, like Connie said. So when she called me, it was like, sure, you know, I'll come down and we'll do this. And uh, so then after we visited Mexico and decided to uh, look at these properties, uh, then the discussion was, well, if you sell your house, you know, why don't we move in together, refi um, the condo uh, mm -hmm. after the remodel, uh, create some cash flow and make this happen. Uh, so we moved in together. Mm -hmm. yes. I, I, one thing I really love is how both of you kind of hit a crossroads pretty much the same time. And how it seemed like some doors were closing with your business before and with changing everything with you, Teresa, and how everything had been closing, but yet opening up at such, they're, they're just, so my team is just showing me a picture of like the floodgates at a place and just having the gates go wide open for both of you and how yeah, both of you were willing to step into it. And a lot of people have a lot of fear going into something new, something like you said, you didn't know where you were going to go, what was going to happen, but you were willing to step forward. And I also love the fact that you stepped into joy and put, your, put yourself first and asking yourself, what do you want? What do you want going forward? And who are you? And, and just stepping into and finding that joy every day, because I think that's something that's difficult for a lot of people and it's it's been a lot of tr training is what I will say a lot of we get the outside forces coming in that kind of holds ourselves down a lot and we're busy things are get crazy I think that's a lot of it but to take the time and yes. to specifically concentrate on joy that's amazing I love that aspect so when you when you got to the point of you're ready to jump off and actually do this, and I love, I'm, I'm just going to say, I love the fact that, Teresa, you do the, the home remodeling, general contracting. I love that aspect of it and to have that skill set and that knowledge going forward. And then also, Connie, with your retreat, in, you know, your retreat background and doing your, you know, travel background with that. I think that's so huge for people to have the combination of both by with both of you and as you started doing this and you started like okay let's jump in with both feet <laughs> let's actually make this a reality was that a, so my team is just saying they'd like you to kind of talk over that with the people here was that somewhat terrifying was it exciting was it a combination of both how was that for both of you it was not terrifying at all. It was pure joy and so yes. much fun. It, we still wake up every morning and we look at each other and start laughing. It, it's and thanking the universe for the uh, everything, abundance. the abundance, the absolute abundance in our life. And but it was not like everything went perfectly. So we, um, <laughs> after spending the summer, you know, working on our business plan and and um uh raising money trying to get all the money together um we returned we made an offer on the house and we went came back down here in november to meet with uh the couple whose house we were looking at and we did not have enough money mm. so we met with them and said it would we haven't raised all the money. We're still short, of like one hundred fifty thousand dollars, <laughs> like most of it. <laughs> Just a little a drop four, in the bucket. <laughs> a four hundred and fifty thousand dollars piece of property, and it was, you know, really way way out of our price range. But we were like, well, let's manifest it, right? So, the couple said. Um, 
Oh, no. You know, we're there, it was a couple from uh, Germany. They'd spent 18 years here and built a, a beautiful home. And um, they were having health issues and they, they were going back to Germany. Because we were, is there any possibility we could you would finance the rest of it or, you know, anything we could <clears throat> negotiate? They said, no. They said, well, you, you could have two more weeks to raise the money. <laughs> Well, we're here and it's like, yeah, I don't think so. Um, so we're like, no, you need to move forward on your on your plan. We're, we'll we'll have to pass. And you know, we were really disappointed because we were so excited about all of this. But we we immediately um, called up someone here locally that we knew and asked uh asked to uh take us around and find a place uh place to rent for the winter the mm. following starting January right and so we, were, we could regroup and look around at other options and possibilities the, but and, and this is one of the things that I've learned over the years is you know we make all our plans and we think we have the perfect um the perfect way to go to do it and then something happens like this disappointment we we were not going to be able to it looked like we're not going to be able to get this piece of property and um but i've learned uh that the universe knows better <laughs> she always better plan than the one we had so I've learned to, you know, not freak out and think all is lost, you know, because our idea didn't work. And um, it was just one idea. Right. In a sea of ideas. <laughs> I, so I we, love that. I love that to let people know that not everything works out as planned. Like you said, it doesn't, it's not all roses going through and everything's working out perfectly. And <laughs> there was no hiccups at all. <laughs> right. But what was amazing about that, yes. uh, that story is a week later, COVID hit and shut down the world. After right. we bought our property. Yeah. The well, following year, yeah. It, it, we realized though now that, um, had we have gotten that piece of property, we would have just gone under. We would have been so over our heads. We wouldn't have had any guests, uh, et cetera. So it's like, okay, you know, let's just shift a little. And and thank goodness. She <laughs> saved our ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that's the other thing people don't realize is sometimes when things don't work out, it's actually saving you from something that would have been really a mess to pull yourself out of if it would have went the other yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't always get our way, but it's not always what's best for us to get our way. And yes. one of the, uh, one of my mottos I'm, I'm very, uh, very much believe in is when people say, how do you manifest? Uh, and well, I, and my answer usually is pick up a shovel. You you have to take action to manifest something. If you if you have a big dream you want to pursue, don't just think about it. Take action. But first, have a very clear intention. Trust yourself, and then start. Do something. You know, take a step. Take the next step, and and don't be afraid. Can I, think, I read something real quick? That we can absolutely. Uh, in regards to manifestation, the only way to get what you really want is to know what you really want. The only way to know what you really want is to know yourself. The only way to know yourself is to be yourself. And the only way to be yourself is to listen to your heart. The universe. I, ab I absolutely love it. Oh, you that. have it? I, I think it's, you know, I think it's so true because a lot of people take action without knowing where they want to be or who they are. They don't know who they are yet and they just take action. And, and 
they're just showing me like when people take spaghetti and throw it at the wall, you don't know if it's going to stick or not. <laughs> That's, so it, it, yeah. <laughs> it's having that intention out there makes such a big difference. Having the intention of what do you want out of it? Where, where do you feel it? Well, how do you feel it will help you going forward and not just stepping into something without a clue? I think that's so important. And some people do, and they, they're they just showing like sink or swim. Some people sink and some people swim. <laughs> but it's nice if you do it intentionally without in, yeah. intentionally swimming, intentionally moving forward. I think that's so key. So as and that's you... Why our yep, go ahead. It, and that's why we base our retreats and our stays down here uh, as intentional. Uh, we will help you, you know, we'll guide you, um, but it's really totally up to you. Do you need silence? Do you need healthier food? Well, of course, we've got Connie, the chef here, um, and, you know, we can provide meals here. We can uh, also take you on very meaningful, uh, deep trips. Uh, we can also so just take, take you to the ocean if you want to jump in the Caribbean. Uh, fun stuff. But but we focus on intentionality. I love that. And I think that's so important for people. For people to know they have an option. Because a lot of times when you go, I mean, like a lot, you're close to some of the bigger resort areas where Cancun, I think you said you were close to. And, and to have those options to say, hey, I want to go experience what it's like down there, but experience it in a yeah. different way, in a heartfelt, intentional way. And honestly, some people with the just... go go ahead with what? With the local community, the Mayan families, and uh, you know, shopping the little street markets, uh, and not just going to an all inclusive. Uh, you know, why visiting even... the natural cenotes that are. Um, these open uh, pools that connect to underground rivers that mm -hmm. are all over the peninsula, but they're natural and they're sacred and they're holy. I love that. And quite, ama quite well, amazing to, uh, I think but we can, we can go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think that's, for both of you to offer where you're actually getting to know the local area, getting to know the flora, the fauna, the, the landscape, the people, and really getting immersed in what it's really like, not the resort-like aspect. I think that's so amazing to do that. And so I have to back up a little bit. When you didn't get the other property, how and you talked to some local people about things available in the area how did that manifest to get what you have now and what you have now this was there before or you created it all on your own oh well first of all i just want to say a little something about you know intention when we the first month or the first week when we were down here together looking at the property and you know found that first piece of property um, we went out to have a margarita and, you know, talk about what it would like, what it would be like to have, have this piece of property and actually live here. And then we went and, and we had a pizza. So we went home, went back to our place at, with the leftover pizza and said, we have to make a vision board. So we made a vision board on the back pizza box. <laughs> and love it. so had a you know pictures of all the things that we saw uh, our life could be here in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And you know pictures, words, um you know part part of the flyer that had the um the specs on his house and uh so just just a, a thing that people can use to make their intention a little more concrete, to write it down, you know, to make it visible and something that you're 
going to look at every day. We we took it back to the states. We had it in our condo, and and I've used vision boards for years, and I think they're just amazing. It's very important to visualize what your goals are, not just say them, but to visualize them. Put a yeah. note on the fridge, uh, draw a picture, and leave it on your table. Look at it every day. That helps raise the vibration to get you to where you're going. I, so, but I then, love that. I love that part of it, and I also love the fact that it doesn't have to be something crazy, like doing this perfect aspect out there. I like how you did the pizza box and started there because I think people get into this this whole thing. And I knew it was going to be so much fun today. <laughs> that people get into this aspect of themselves. I have to be perfect. I have to do it right. I have to do it, you know, this perfect vision board. And you're saying just grab what you've got and just make it work. And I think that's people have to let yep. go of that perfectionism. I think it's so important of moving ourselves forward. I mentioned yeah. earlier that we wake up laughing every morning and sometimes it's laughing at ourselves. <laughs> it's, we're, we're so quick, but it, it's so fun to just be real. And, yeah. and an, another thing we did that really made a difference was uh, we committed to ourselves. In fact, and at separate times, uh, we married yeah. ourselves. And we had a little ceremony all by ourselves, you know, on a secluded beach. And um, and we did this separately as we were so committed to loving ourselves. And we had no intention to ever be, because we had that discussion when we started this business. Well, what if you get into a right relationship? It's like, well, I'm not going to. What if you do it? Well, I'm not going to. I have no intention to ever be in a relationship again. I I like myself and I'm having fun. And, and yes. that's why it was such a surprise when we realized we were in love. <laughs> but, but, but yes, <laughs> I, I had, well, I had um, this business of taking women on self-care retreats. And um, they say that you teach what you need to learn, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so uh, I had been married for 15 years and um and had three beautiful children but I was divorced in uh I got divorced in in the early 80s and um and that was when I uh first came to Mexico a woman that I worked with invited me to come to Mexico with her and I fell in love with the ocean and the healing power of water and the Caribbean and the people here. And so that's what started my dream. But I had, uh, I had purchased a ring in Puerto Morelos one year after a retreat that we had here. And, and I started to wear it on my right hand and, and I called it my self care ring, ring mm -hmm. to remind me to love myself and after wearing it on this on this hand for a few months I just woke up one day and and decided that I wanted to wear it on my ring finger my wedding ring finger and marry myself that if if I could learn to love myself like I wanted a partner to love me then I'm might be ready to be in a relationship. So I was um, single and lived alone for like 40 years when we reconnected our friendship in 2019. And then she married herself after that. And I think that... Um, that that was part of us um, being able to manifest is is just getting to that point of self love and joy uh, by ourselves first before we made you know made a couple. I think and that's not that we intended to. 
<laughs> I think that's something that's so important for people. I, I love what you just both had said, talking about marrying yourself and really loving yourself and treating, cherishing yourself and having that ceremony for yourself. I think that's like everyone should do it. They really should to, to really yeah. look at you are so worth it that you're willing to marry yourself is I think it's it's all it's a it's a way for people to look at themselves as worthy and lovable and cherishable and wanting to always protect them <laughs> it's it's so profound for people and I think it's something a lot of people don't even think of and for both of you to do that is I think absolutely amazing and I think it's so important for people hearing this to know to treat yourself like you would someone who you love so deeply that you'd want to marry them and and tr and treating yourself the same way with the same respect with the same kind words and support because so many of us don't have the kind words for ourselves and that's something I feel is is a really good reminder I love how you did with the ring for the reminder to say this is for me <laughs> I love that <laughs> And as you started you. on that journey, it's it's amazing. And again, I want to congratulate both of you. It's an amazing journey and an amazing manifestation both of you have done moving yourself to where you're at now. And as you went through this, you know, it's a journey of manifesting in the physical, but you also did a journey of manifesting in the emotional aspect for both of you. And I think that's the greatest intention for both of you to set out there and to fill it with that love and that support it's it's something I can see where people coming to your just to be in your space to be in your presence to experience that to experience like you said laughing up waking up laughing because that's something a lot of people wake up and it's it's grumpy right away it's like oh my gosh I got to get up oh the alarm went off oh I have to take care of this and for you to just take a moment and wake up and be so happy to be in the existence you're in right now. And for people to step into that themselves, no matter what they're doing. Is that something? And we hold that space. That's the key. We, you hold we create and hold the space for transformation. And that's that's part of what we do. And I think that's the that's the biggest thing is people to to experience that to step into that loving supportive space so key to help on their own personal transformation for themselves and as you continued to you went through a lot of the emotional aspect and you created this space you built this space were you doing that work yourself were you having someone doing it and this was there was no place, no house there. You had to build the whole thing on your own. This yeah. was uh, absolute dense jungle. And we did hire a, a, a wonderful general contractor uh, down here um, because I was not familiar with, uh, I built everything in Minnesota. Um, so it, it's completely different building down here. Uh, and I wasn't quite sure. So we hired a general to uh, assist us. Uh, we did all the design work, the layout on the property. Uh, and his team was a uh, Mayan team of workers. And they literally showed up in flip flops and, <laughs> and, and shorts and, and, you know, help build the house. Um, but I'm pretty proficient with a chainsaw and other tools. Um, uh, so, you know, it's, they, they built the house and the casita. I'm doing all of the finishing work um, and the layout on the property. We moved many, many rocks. I love moving rocks because every time you touch a rock, it's millions of years. And it just goes through me. So moving Whoa. rocks is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, so we just kind of carved. And but but again, it wasn't absolutely perfect. We we came back here 
um, in in the in January of 20, 2020, and we rented a place for three months, and we started to look. We started to look at at property that was already built, uh, at, you know, more close to the ocean, maybe in the in the town, but also started to look in the jungle. And then um, a friend of ours that that I've known since the early '80s, uh, a local, and and um, her family is one of the founding families of Cancun. Mm -hmm. They moved here from Mexico City in the '70s and had a business for 35 years. Called us when she knew and was all excited about us moving here. And um, she called us one Monday morning and said, girls, you got to meet me at the corner at one o'clock this afternoon. And we're like, what, what? And she, I've got some property you have to see. My brother and I went out into the jungle yesterday to see uh, some lots. They were having um, a promotion, a weekend promotion to, um, get some cash flow at this eco ranch. And I think it's the perfect place for you to buy some land. So we met her, she brought us out here and we bought four lots on St. Patrick's yeah. day of 2020. And a week later, COVID shut down the world. Yeah. But we had bought four lots in the jungle, totally uncleared, dense jungle. So we and could come out here and play because, you know, COVID wasn't a, a factor. There was nobody around. <laughs> so we just went for it. But we we were introduced to a friend of our friend who was a permaculturist, and she wanted to build us a house out here. And um, so we we started working with her and talking with her and showing our plans and everything. But at a certain point, Teresa said to me, Connie, this isn't gonna work. Um, she she can't build that house for the for the amount of money that she's saying. Cause she she knows she knew how much the blocks would cost and had done research and she's like we can't, we can't go ahead with this. And so anyway, we, we had to um, let her go and start again to find another contractor. So I, I mean, I'm just trying to show that it isn't, it wasn't, everything wasn't like perfect. But you have to and, be able to let those things go. And it's, we both kind of learned to just uh, go, okay, universe is trying to tell us something. Let's listen. Right. And two days later, I was in the bookstore in Puerto Morales talking to the owner. And she said, oh, I hear you have bought property out in the jungle. It's a small town. So everybody knows everything. <laughs> and, she, and I said, in fact, um, we're looking for a contractor. The, the one that we started with isn't going to work. Do you know anybody you could recommend? She goes, oh my gosh, yes. Our neighbor is a fabulous young man. And I said, well, did he build your house? And she said, no, but he's done remodeling and he's amazing. And we've become best friends. We just love him. In fact, we've become uh, his young son's surrogate grandmothers. Aww. We are the abuela. <laughs> How and awesome we're also is known that? Some of the locals as two old ladies with machetes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you both got some spunk behind you, and I like it. <laughs> so, got introduced to this absolutely amazing young contractor who had moved here from Mexico City with his wife. Uh, because he wanted to learn how to build in the Yucatan. Mm -hmm. And he'd never built a house in the jungle. He he was building in town. And so he, he really didn't want to take us on. 
he's like, well, I really, I have seven projects going right now. And, you know, I really don't need another project, but I'll talk to you. This, this was per phone call. So he met with us and Teresa had the plan all ready. And, and he's, he, he, uh, there were, he was intrigued with us, I guess. Um, well, and for someone to show up with the plans on the table and say, build this, we have the electrical schematic, the plumbing schematic, everything we wanted. Doors, yeah, doors, windows, specs. So, but he said um, the the two um, managers that, you know, go around, check on all the projects during the week will have to give their OK. So when we have our meeting, our next meeting. I will present this, and if they agree to it, we'll take it on. Mm -hmm. So uh, they he presented it at the next meeting, and um, he said, well, they'll have to come out and look at your property as well. So we they made an appointment. The two, the two fellows came out, and they were just like, oh, my God, it's just gorgeous out here. Yes, we want to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's how they they took it on, and um, yeah. So it was just universe. You just listen to ev all the information you're getting, and consider everything. Use your own intuition. We all have it, but we rarely listen to it. <laughs> Or we choose not to listen to it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you well, know, sort of condition not to, you know, you're you're supposed to, you know, listen to your logic or advice from other people, but you really have to follow your heart. Yes. And your intuition. And that's another reason we came here. It, we we felt so squeezed where we were and exactly that's the mindset we have uh in the u.s right now we have to have uh millions of dollars in the bank to even consider retiring that's not true um you have to listen to your banker you have to listen to your attorney you have to listen to your neighbor you have your hoa you uh, and and we just get squeezed into a little box until we can't manifest our dreams we I have to learn to shut I think that's very true a lot of people you're listening to all the outside influences and you're not really taking the time to listen to yourself to say everybody's saying I can't do it can I really do it and I think I think that also comes down they're just saying there's a lot of people don't manifest what they want because they start the manifestation and then they start listening to everyone else around them and most of the people around yeah. them who say you can't manifest haven't done that manifestation to begin with. So how would they know? The only reason they say that can't be done is because they couldn't do it themselves. It doesn't mean you can't do it. And listening exactly. to all of that is it's huge. <laughs> They're afraid. It's fear mm -hmm. that people, you know, oh my God, what could happen? You know, la la la. And you, you just have to ignore that. Especially, again, we're living in a fear right now that is overwhelming for so many people. And it's creating uh, distraction, depression, and it's lowering everybody's vibration. You break out of that box. Do whatever you need to do. Uh, meditate. Um, take, especially... Take care of yourself. Listen to yourself. If you've got to lock yourself in your bedroom for three hours a day to meditate, do it. it, it and, and don't let all of those outside, well, I should be working. I should be mowing the grass. I should be doing something else, whatever it is. If, if that's what you need to do, do it. I love that, it's, you know, letting people know to make sure to take that time for yourself because no one's going to give it to you. 
you have to take it for yourself. It's not like you're going to walk out and someone's going to say, Hey, I need this done. I need this done. They're not going to, you're not going to walk out and they're going to say, Oh, I think you need to go take some time to yourself. And then can you help me with something afterwards? You don't usually see that. No. <laughs> for yourself. That would be nice, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> and oh, it I is and it is moving past that fear because there is a lot that's, and I'm just going to put this in air quotes. There is a lot we're told to be fearful of, <laughs> but there's a lot mm -hmm. we don't need to fear. <laughs> and to step out of yeah. that fear is huge. So huge. And as you started and, and they, they just want me to back up a little bit. They just want to say to look for people to hear what both of you had said before when you hit points where you had to move beyond someone that you were working with, when you you had ideas of where you were going, you were willing to stop where you were going and go a different direction and to might be with different people. It might be a different area, might be a whole different avenue you never expected, but to be willing to step into that, to be willing to say, if this isn't working, I'm willing to look for something that is. Because a lot of people will Yes. Yeah. Beat themselves like crazy trying to make something work that shouldn't be made yes. to work. <laughs> yes. And I think that's something that people can really take away from both of you is knowing on this whole festation journey, it's knowing when something doesn't work, it's time to switch direction. It doesn't mean you just keep going down that road and making it more and more and more difficult for yourself. And, and, and it I doesn't switch is failure it's not it's just switching directions and i think that's something people really need to give themselves a, a free pass for a hall pass to say it's not a failure and i think that's something we're taught if it doesn't work out you failed at it and instead of saying well if it doesn't work out that means there's a different path and there's something better for me that's a whole different way of looking at it than failure yes right. yes well put and one of the things for both of you, and and I, I, I can just imagine with both with once you gave the contractor and the people in the area the schematics for the house with everything on it, I think I bet they were a little surprised to see it everything laid out instead of just like a, you know, a crosshatch little house set up there. <laughs> and as you started going down that path, and they're just saying that was a really good way to win over the locals. <laughs> was because of who you are oh, yeah. and not being afraid to say this is who I am this is what I know and I'm just it just feels like such a great balance with you Teresa with all of your general contacting skills and then Connie with all of your the chef I can imagine what the food is like when people choose to eat with down by you that's got to be pretty amazing <laughs> Is that something yeah. you really had to adjust with, uh, with the food aspect and, and what, because I know Connie, you were used to doing things up in Minnesota where we have access to pretty much everything is, is, did you find that a challenge doing the food aspect down there? Well, first of all, the food down here is so much better than the food up in the state. It's fresh. It's real. And it hasn't uh, been around for months before you even get it. Often it was harvested yesterday. Nice. <laughs> and in the beginning, we were a little uh, challenged because when we took possession of the house, um, there there was no finishing inside. We, we had them do uh, one bathroom. So we had a sink, a toilet, and a shower. And that was pretty much it. We didn't have lights. We didn't have um, hot water. Um, we, we went out and bought a generator and a two burner um, hot plate. Well, before we had oh. that, we made our coffee uh, with my plumbing, plumbing torch. <laughs> Innovative. <laughs> So we really started basically kind of camping and then we, and we had a cooler for our, our fridge so we had to get ice every other day to keep anything cold and that's how we started 
Um, and, and it was fun, mm -hmm. but obviously we weren't, um, gourmet cooking yet at that point. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, well, you could do it on the torch. Me. Come on. <laughs> situation, the meals were wonderful. Don't let her tell you they weren't. <laughs> so it was definitely a process and every, you know, every week, every month we got the next thing and we, mm -hmm made the made an upgrade and um then we got the solar so, so we, we had electricity yeah and and we're we're completely off grid here we have uh separate systems a well for the house and a well for the casita a solar system for the house a solar system for the casita we do have a backup generator in case we have a month of rain straight and it doesn't collect um and then we have two big gas tanks that, oh, every six weeks, I'll take one in, fill it up in, in the little town north of us and bring it back. And, you know, that's our hot water and our uh, stove. Um, and, and we're learning a lot from the locals. We, we were intent on having what we do up in the States, this fabulous kitchen. And, of course, I wanted to build a fabulous kitchen for my wife here being the chef that she is and they don't have kitchens inside the house here they're outdoor kitchens and you know we quickly realized why because it heats up the house <laughs> yeah and it's hot it, yes so we're learning a lot of different ways to do things too and it's really fun to learn different ways of life and lifestyles and I think too, it's really nice that you're that for one thing, because of both of you and your personalities and who you are, I think the locals are very enthralled with you <laughs> and want to learn more about you. <laughs> yeah, they, oh, they're curious. They are the abuelas, the grandmothers. <laughs> but I think it's so interesting that you're able to, because of that, because of who you are, you're able to talk with the locals and able to want to understand their way of life too and I think that's really important is to really want to get to know locals want to know how do they live what is their everyday life like what are the tricks they do as they have adjusted to their life in the jungle and understanding having that open conversation with them and also with you having people there and you be able to take the people that come to see you and to also introduce them to that culture, I think is so huge. Has there been a, a learning curve with, with uh, communicating with the locals? Are they all in a different uh, languages? Is it mainly one language with the Spanish or is it different or is it a lot of English too? It, it, all three, it's uh, English. Uh, they're very good at learning other languages. It's pr primarily Spanish. But it's also a lot of Mayan, um, hmm. the old Mayan dialect. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank goodness for um, Google, Google, Google Translate. Translate. <laughs> that works and for sometimes we laugh at Because <laughs> it doesn't always translate the way you, you think you it's can. going to. <laughs> it's kind of, we have uh, pretty funny conversations at times. <laughs> <laughs> I, but Teresa, uh, Teresa can communicate with the builders because she's a builder, you know, drawing pictures, um, you know, sign language. It's like she really connects with them pretty easily. Mm -hmm. And they just have such a respect for her because they learn from her as well as we learn from them. and. Um, you know, she's got tricks to teach them and they have tricks to teach us. Absolutely. I, well, most I of my that. Spanish right are construction terms. <laughs> <laughs> Which would make very, uh, make sense for sure. <laughs> but I love the fact because right. my, my husband always calls them the safety sandals that they wear. <laughs> when they build them here. <laughs> We always laugh like, oh, they've got their safety sandals on. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but it, it's really interesting because yeah. everyone does things differently and to be able to learn them from you and you from them I think is so important because you know a lot of times and they're my team is just saying so many of people here you're so used to doing things a certain way that you don't look beyond it. You don't open up your perception and look that there's other ways of doing it. And they're saying that that's one thing when people come by you too, they start realizing there's a whole new way of looking at things, even though you've done it your whole life a certain way, to be open to seeing what else the box holds and to blow the box open. I think it's amazing. (laughs) Amazing. We can was why are they doing it like that we would we would watch them work and it's like the the crews would show up with uh the mayans show up with three tools uh, a long clear piece of tubing that they fill with water and that's a level oh and that's how they find level and they have for many thousands of, thousands years. of years done it that way uh yeah. the other tool is a machete so they can start cutting trees and making well the first thing they do is go out and cut trees and build a ladder and when they're done with the project they put the ladder back in the woods and let it rot and the third tool (laughs) is a small cement trowel those are the only three tools they show up with to build a house and it's amazing i watch them start excavating for the footings and we're, of course, pretty much on bedrock here in the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, and they showed up with a little four-inch cement trowel and started excavating with it. And I'm going, that's going to take forever. Where's the backhoe? The, you know, where's the pickaxe? Where's And it turned out it's the perfect tool because of the terrain down here. You can't just put a shovel in and dig you have to pick at it until you're on the bedrock and then you build from there. And it can be at surface in one spot and two feet over, it can be three feet down. Wow. So you just, I think anyway, yeah. Yes. Three tools and they build a house. Wow. Can you imagine showing up? Can you imagine showing up to a build site here with three tools on you? They'd look at you and laugh. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. But yet they can yeah, accomplish. Quite amazing. It's amazing they can accomplish everything they need to with just the bare minimum and still getting a beautiful a beautiful yep. product out of it. And yes, it, absolutely. They did an amazing job on this house. I am so impressed with uh, how square level, true plum, uh, the finish on the walls. It, it's just beautiful nice so yeah, when people... it was... oh, go ahead months. it was built in six months which is almost um unheard unbelievable of here. yeah unheard of here it takes usually takes a really long time and of course because it was here out remote in the jungle there weren't as many regulations to follow but it still was amazing people can't believe we you know we have this in six six months and a lot of times they can't even build anything close to that here in six months <laughs> with all the equipment right. everything going on so that is an amazing feat for sure absolutely yeah. so when, when people stay with you and they they can stay in the casita what does that casita in, uh, entail? What is in there? And how many people can stay with you if they come to stay at your place? Preferably uh, one to two in the casita, but it can sleep six. It, it has a, a main bed on the main floor, and then it has a, a small loft above that has a double bed. And then there's a screen porch. Uh, that has a a double futon that pulls out. So if people just want to be on adventures, we can accommodate up to six uh, for just sleeping. It has a very small but uh, deep up to your neck pool 
um, just a sitting pool uh, right outside the, the front door. Uh, a beautiful outdoor shower with a mural of a mermaid, a friend of ours painted, uh, a screen porch, a very small kitchenette. Um, but the kitchenette is more for just snacks um, or whatever, a small yeah. mini fridge. Uh, we'll, we'll prepare, more than happy to prepare the meals for you. Nice. And it comes. Yes, it, you, it comes with. Uh, Beautiful continental breakfast. When Connie says, when most people say continental breakfast, they think it's fruit and a piece of toast, but this is, it's very nice. <laughs> I love that. And so one of the things a lot of people are saying, when they go, say if they come to Mexico, a lot of people have heard it's it's a little dicey down there at times. How do people get to your place and is it safe to, and how? what's the best way to get there and is it safe? This well, is, uh, we feel safer here than, than anywhere in the U.S., <laughs> to be honest. There are sketchy areas in Mexico. This is not one of them. This is very safe. You fly into the Cancun airport. We have several drivers or we can pick you up. Um, and and we, have, we have a network of people who can get you where you want to go, uh, activities you want to do, uh, or just be here and rest. It, it's, there's just so many things. Nice. And we'll design your time to how, to how you see it or how you want to spend your week, you know? Each, each visit we can customize uh, for an individual. Nice. And they can do that just by contacting you mainly through your website, the DelaRosaTravels.com, and they can contact you through there. Yes. And or our emails. And I'll have those. Yeah. E I'll have everything down below the uh, in the links with it for everyone, because everyone wants something different, wants something unique, wants something tailored to their own needs. So I love the fact that you're able to do that. And is there times where you can take people out maybe if they want to have someone help meditating or doing something like that? Is that anything you help with or you do with or you can work oh. with? We have uh, uh, several people who come out and do custom massage body work. Um, we do one uh, little program called Lunch Lomi and Learning, where they come out for a Lomi Lomi massage in our screen porch. Then they come in for a fabulous lunch. And then we take them around and talk about the, the plants, the medicine, um, the different trees, the history um etc uh that's that's one event that we have here but we can uh and we can be guides yes for the whole time because we know the area and the, we know the people we know the best places and we can take you to mayan ruins we can take you to colonial oh. villages uh along the cooking way. classes uh, tequila tasting uh mm -hmm. <laughs> swimming in snorkeling diving um uh, you name it we can arrange it i love that i love the, we have very i love the idea that uh -huh. everyone can pick what they want can can contact you and say this is what i'm looking for this is what i'm looking for and you can kind of basically put a package together for them and I think that's something that is very, very unique with what you offer. And so say if there's people that just want to come down, they want to do, maybe there's four people, five people, they want to come down or maybe just do like almost like a mini retreat. Do you offer that too, where you can, you can either host the retreat or, or do the retreat or, or handle that? Is that also something you do? Absolutely. Yes. We'd like to work with, uh, well, we love to put on trees and also work with people who already have their own um, following, maybe, you know, like uh, yoga people or any group, a bird group, a book group, and they just need help to put all the pieces together and know where to, you know, a house big enough to stay if they want to be on the, uh, on the Caribbean or they want to be uh on the colonial side where the local people live 
or they want to be in the jungle, we can we can help them get that all put together, as well as you know any side trips or uh, people that they might want to work with here. That's a pretty amazing uh, ability to be able to put all that together. So this is something that people could really think out of the box about and think out of the box about what you'd like to do. And like you said, if you have bigger groups, you can find somewhere that can host the bigger groups and be able to get all that together, take care of all the groundwork ahead of time. So that's something I think is very unique with what you're doing and is very, very appreciated by, uh, I can even, you know, envision even families coming down, having a totally different experience with the peninsula. With Absolutely. These peninsula. That's huge. We yes, have, have one coming next month. Yes. A, fam a small family that's going to stay with us. And we've had kids here before. And, and they're all, we've also arranged for them to spend a couple of nights in town so they can see the village and uh, spend time on the beach. And we're also taking them uh, to a small town about two hours away uh, called Via de Lead, which is a... Um, colonial village or colonial city rather not it's bigger than a village um but is is another totally different experience different experience so how do people get around by you so so say people come in they land at the airport they have to rent their own car or do you uh, provide oh, some of that they can they can if they want to but we have professional drivers licensed drivers that uh we can we can pick up a a large group in a van. We have trusted drivers, uh, or we can do a personal pickup if it's just one or two people uh, in and, in our vehicle. Um, it, but we have a we've got a whole list of people uh, that we can tap their expertise in. I love that. I think that's something really important because a lot of people are. You know, you get a little nervous. Do I want to drive in a country I'm not familiar with? And do I, you know, I don't want to get in the wrong spot. So I think that's something that's really important for people. Absolutely. <clears throat> so what is, when, the, yep, go ahead. We want you to get off that airplane and shut the stress off. We'll take care of everything. That is something I think is so important for people because that's, I think that's why a lot of people go to the all-inclusive resorts because they know everything's going to get taken care of, but yet you're you're in an environment that's not connecting with nature, not really getting to to know the actual area you're in, and that's something I think is so important with your area is interesting and different and unique. And say people like you went out originally, I think you were going to be closer to a town, and then you went out into the jungle. Why did you make that transition? And what is your connection to the jungle and nature as you're out there now? And are there ways you can help people connect to what's around them when they come and visit you? Oh, totally. Uh, I'm my, an earth girl. <laughs> she she is. She's an earth girl and I'm more of a water girl. And, and I spent the last 40 years visiting mostly towns on the Caribbean because I love the ocean. So I kind of had pictured myself, um, you know, re retiring somewhere close, very close to the water and, and fell in love with this little town, Puerto Morelos. But as we started looking for property, we saw over the last couple, three, four years, um, a lot of of building going on here or there rather in town and more condos going up more cars it was usually just a walk a walkable town not that many cars and you could take a taxi if you needed to get anywhere um and um the more we started looking in town and you know feeling the, the busyness and the noise increasing that we started to look out in, you know, out in the jungle. And, and, and I've lived in, I, yes. I have 40 acres up in Northern Minnesota 
and have been there forever, raised my kids there. Um, and the quiet, uh, that's what I'm used to. So uh, this was, yeah, I guess it's more my realm than Connie's, but we have the best of both worlds because yes. we can go to the Caribbean whenever we want. And it's yeah. just a hop, skip and a jump away. We're 25 minutes away from, 20. from the ocean. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. So this, and, and I love the quiet. I love the quiet and I love the nature. And, and people coming here uh, just to get this far away from a city, they naturally relax. Mm -hmm. They naturally, um, if they, if they be still and listen and open up their senses, they will connect with nature. And, um, mm -hmm. and we've seen it, we've seen it happen. And the, you know, the Japanese have this thing called forest bathing and we have jungle bathing. And it's basically just immersing yourself in nature and letting it work. And um, and and they've um, they've discovered you know measurable results from forest bathing, jungle bathing. It reduces tension and stress. They can measure it. It uh, drops your blood pressure. Um, and it know, gives you access to your to your body, um, to joy, to to just be yourself. It really helps you to be in the moment. Because mm -hmm. if you're sitting in the middle of a forest or jungle and a blue morph butterfly comes by, you're in that moment watching that. You're you're not thinking about, I gotta fix the car or whatever. Or, <laughs> um, and just to sit out in this yard and an occasional toucan will pop out or uh, the spider oh, monkeys will move through um, or uh, even a tarantula will go crawling across the path and which are, they're nothing to worry about. They're beautiful. Uh, and if you leave nature alone, it will leave you alone. <laughs> um, right. And then, but I, it, I think it that's something. really. Yeah, go ahead. No, it really helps you be in the moment. I think that's something a lot of people is, is so needed because a lot of times, I mean, we're programmed to always think of what's next. What do we have to do next? What's the next day? What do I need? On, what's on my to-do list? And forgetting to take the time to just, just take a moment, even just take a breath to be in the moment we're in, to really experience it, to, to see what's around us. And I, and I, I love the fact that, for both of you to be able to connect with nature, you both connect very deeply with it and to be able to share that with people. And to, I just feel like both of you are just full of a wealth of knowledge and you're open to people asking questions and for, for both of you to be open to that asking questions. So people don't feel less than, and, and are able to be open with you and ask questions about different things that you're that are around them, different experiences they're having, I think, and how to connect into that nature element. What is something both of you do to connect into that nature? Is there a practice you do or something you do? Or is it or is it a we simpler thing? We we put our phones down. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big one <laughs> disconnect disconnect from all the noise and and dependence on machines yes and, it's wonderful technology yeah. but we have to be able to be disconnected from it sometimes and here at we do have internet here uh but we do not have it in the casita so if you need internet, it will be available to all our guests from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. After that, house. after that, no. So we're almost forcing you to put your phone away. 
uh, at a certain point. And also, I mean, people who even have their phones out to capture the moment on a, it, take pictures, pictures of this, pictures of that, pictures of your food. If you're doing that, you're missing that moment. You're not in the moment, you're on your camera. That to look is, back at later. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. And I think to offer people that ability to say, hey, we have internet, it's here, but at this time, then it's time for you. Then it's time for you to get in touch with everything and, and give yourself that freedom to do it. And honestly, for some people, this might be the first time in a long time they've had the ability to set it down. So that's so key, so important for so many people. So many people need to do that. I have to ask, so and you can, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, you have the um, the Casa della Rosa and the four elements. What is the meaning behind that? <laughs> well, my name is Delgado. And my name is Rose, so Della Rosa. We put our two last names <laughs> together, and we just wanted to have the support of the four elements and celebrate the four elements here in the jungle. Um, and our intention is to build a casita dedicated to each element. Our first casita is the water casita, and it has its own pool, yeah. and that's the intention um, of that casita. So that's that's the. Uh, the air, yeah. the air casita will be a tree house. Mm -hmm. The earth casita built of stone, mm -hmm. uh, et, et cetera. <laughs> I love it. What a unique way to do things. I think that's something so important to, to have the different elements with it as you continue to grow, I think is is a very uh, it, it also it's very interesting for people to have that experience of the different intentions behind each of the casitas i think that's something important and as you continue to grow they can try the other casitas to see what they feel uh, so this has been a journey of a few years you've been on this journey of of actually bringing it to fruition and you're not done yet are you <laughs> Oh, no. no, just the beginning. <laughs> What's your next biggest steps you're looking at doing? Well, well, we're we're sort of taking a breath right now. Yeah, we we've been a uh, um, really on an intense but absolutely fabulous, wonderful, exciting kind of magic carpet ride for the last two and a half years. Um, and so we're sort of taking an intermission and kind of uh, regrouping. So we just are finishing the details on our house and the casita. We just finished that. Um, and so and we have people people uh, scheduled that were that were welcoming this next few months. So, we don't have a huge project on the board yet. Not just yet. It's <laughs> time for a little break. And we'll keep you posted. I love and it. just share, sharing it with other people. So family and friends have started to come down. And it's just been, been really wonderful. Because we so just want to share the joy and beauty that, that we manifested. So I have to ask, when you first started this journey, you said you have like friends and family that are coming down now, people you know, were they as supportive in the beginning or did they think you were a little crazy? Well, my family <laughs> has always thought I was a little crazy. I didn't quite fit in. Um, I, I'm pretty much a, a risk taker and a um, non rule follower I guess and um so I I guess my my kids were like well here goes mom again um <laughs> kind of idea 
but uh, and our friends, I think, maybe were like, well, we'll watch and see. Um, nobody really uh, said, oh, are you too crazy or what? But um, they just kind of waited to see. And I think they, a lot of them were pretty amazed. Well, we, and we were too. I mean, some days we just wake up and go, oh my God, look what we did. <laughs> you know, I mean, we just, just such a joy and, and, we were having so much fun and we were on such a high vibration that it just went so fast. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that and I think that, know. Go ahead. That you love the fact that what? I was just going to say, I just, I love the fact that you both have kept so much joy about it. So much excitement, even now, you, and you're still on the journey, but taking time for yourselves now, but still enjoying that journey, still enjoying the excitement of it and knowing there's more to come and you'll get to it. But it doesn't mean you have to be going 100 miles an hour every day to get what you want in your life either. It's taking those those moments to sit back and just taking a breath and enjoying it and enjoying it with family and friends and seeing what they've created. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, even though they may have known you've always been out of the box, I bet they're pretty proud of what you've accomplished and what you've done and for you stepping out of that box and showing others they can too. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I, you know, and I think <clears throat> that us uh, falling in love was, was a result of us being on this high vibration of mm -hmm. manifestation that, you know, the highest vibrations is love and joy. I mean, and we were already both in joy. There was yeah. nowhere else to go. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, it, it was on a very unlikely pairing. Uh, Teresa is gay and I'm straight. So it was nothing that we ever expected mm -hmm. or thought would happen um and had been good friends for 20 years so so um it was interesting because many people saw our our love before we did or you know they saw us as a couple before we did because yes. it just wasn't in our our space and you know to think about ourselves like that mm -hmm. um but again we we stepped into it and just so easy so amazing we feel like we've been together for a million years and i think we had past life together mm -hmm. um so we're just enjoying it all i love the fact that you're willing to you know look at yourselves differently look at how how you perceived yourself and how you decided to change and I it's all it's always funny when other people around you see things about you that you don't see yourself <laughs> yeah. they see it first <laughs> yes yeah. but I love and the our... fact that you both embrace that and and really brought that through and really have it's the no holds barred this is who we are if you like us you like us if you don't you don't but this is who we are but we're just going to enjoy life and not worry about anything else and I think that's yeah. important for everyone for everyone to really think and and look at themselves differently and and ask how much how much you may have stopped yourself from doing certain things because of beliefs you've had or beliefs of other people. And I think that's something that is so key for people moving past all those beliefs at this time. And I think it's amazing. And I'm really excited for both of you on your journey and going forward and all the people you're going to be meeting and working with and helping helping as they learn to connect and learn to, uh, I love the, I still love the fact of marrying themselves, finding themselves, mm -hmm. honoring themselves, and then you're ready to go forward. And that's something so key. Make, so many people know. What's that? We, we can make, the, we can make those arrangements for a retreat as well. Come on down and marry yourself. 
that is an amazing right. retreat for sure. That would be an amazing retreat, amazing retreat for so many people to do that, to have that, that moment, to have that option, to have that space to say, it's okay to marry myself and really honor myself. It's so important. And so Very what's that? Very empowering. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, you know, as you've been talking about it, I mean, I can feel the power, the energy behind it from here. And to be in your presence, to have that, to have that option is huge, huge for people. And what a great way to do it. So I just want, I just want to thank both of you for being here. It's been an amazing, amazing time. I want to make sure, have, is there anything either of you would like to bring up before we close for today? Well, I'd like to read this Manifesting Prosperity Attunement. And because um, I think you have to practice you have to practice a little and uh, and also surround yourself with people who are of a high vibration and that you can learn from, yes. which we both have done over the years separately and together. But I had a friend who was who was teaching uh, manifesting prosperity and she had a card that she would give to people. Um, and I ran off a whole page of these little um, um, intentions and um, laminated them. And I had them all over my house nice. and on the bathroom, neck, on my bedside table and uh, in the kitchen on the cupboard and in the living room. And anyway, it's, it's a beautiful uh, intention. And it says, Today is my day. I am unlimited. I have more than enough time, money, and energy to do what I want when I want. I am a receiver. Receiving expands the highest vibration that I am and brings me peace, joy, and love. I receive to overflowing. I have decided that it's important that I feel good. I continually look for ways, thoughts, and experiences that make me feel the best that I am. Today, I can do anything, absolutely anything. And you know that if you see that and read that every day and follow or, or um, surround yourself with people that think and act that way mm -hmm. that I, that's how you create a habit and and also um be thankful yes and gratitude uh, is and very important develop yes a practice of gratitude because the more grateful you are the more you will receive and the more joy Joyful you are, the more perfect you are. That's where you're created for joy. I love that. I think that's something so, a lot of people forget. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I just, I, it's, to me, it's amazing all you've created and being able to share some of those manifesting ideas and the, and the, and the things you, both of you have read off for people. I think it is amazing. And it really lets people know anything's possible when you believe in yourself, when you believe you're capable, when you know who you are and you love and support yourself, anything's possible. And that's something both of you have shown so many people today and will continue to show others. And I am so excited to share that, to share who you are with all the people here. And I'm just been, it's been such a, I just feel like such a blessing. So I appreciate both of you being here and sharing that information because it is, it's so needed and for people to have the options with you to be able to have these different experiences too and getting to know your heart 
because for me, it's about showing people what are what's the heart behind the people I interview. And I feel that your hearts have been shining bright through this whole interview. And I'm so happy people get to know who you are. So thank you so much for being you. Thank, thank you so much you. for sharing everything. I appreciate it. <laughs> and thank you. Delightful. This is, and I it's... hope you trust yourself and um, yes. experience uh, the jungle alone yep. or with your partner. Absolutely. I would have, I would have, I was going to try to get down there this year and I looked at my schedule and it's like, no, there's just no way. <laughs> there's just no way. But this next winter, I might have the possibility there. <laughs> I to have you. <laughs> oh, thank you. It is awesome. I just want to thank both of you so much. This has been an absolute treat. And I think you know, letting people know as you listen to this interview to go back and listen to some of the parts in it because there was some very profound information shared with people on manifesting and bringing their dreams to life and and how it's been done. So I just want to thank you both for all of that. I appreciate you very much. And I want to also thank you. You are welcome. I also want to remind everybody, make sure to go to your website. It is Della, so Della Rosa Travels, and uh, the link will be down below. And for those of you listening who don't can't be able to get in the link, it's D-E-L-A-R-O-S-A-T-R-A-V-E-L-S.com. So Della Rosa Travels, and check out their website, contact them directly because they can offer you so much more than you can ever imagine. And I am looking forward to all of you checking out more of their information, going and staying with them and creating your own self-care retreat for yourself. And with that, I just want to say thank you again, uh, Connie and Teresa. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate both of you. And I just want to say, I want to remind everyone, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your time and your knowledge and make sure to watch the next episodes of Edge Talk Radio. They're on the first and the third Tuesdays of the month at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And right after that, you can, if you if you can either go to the downloadable podcast, you can listen to it there if you miss the actual episode, or you can check it out on YouTube and watch the episode because it is so much fun to watch. And so I just want to thank everyone again. And I also want to say thank you for listening, expanding, and amplifying our universe together. Thank you and have an absolutely amazing day.